the battle for Solidar in East Ukraine rages on, in what has been described as the bloodiest of the war so far. Further pressure has been heaped on US President Joe Biden after more documents containing classified material are discovered at a second location. The head of Turkey's medical association is released from detention after being convicted of spreading terrorist propaganda. Smoke rises over the cities of Bakhmut and Solidar in East Ukraine, where the ongoing battle for control has been described as the bloodiest of the war so far. The fate of Solidar is still unclear, with Russian mercenary group Wagner claiming to control the gateway town, while the Kremlin cautioned against declaring victory prematurely. Kiev's border guard service has released images claiming to show Ukrainian forces stopping an advance of Ukrainian troops in the town. Solidar is important. If Russia prevails, it will aid its assault on the strategic Ukrainian city of Bakhmut, which Russia needs in its quest to capture all of the Donbass. For more than five months, constant Russian shelling has left the city of Bakhmut in ruins. Around 70,000 people used to live there. Now only about 10% of the population is left. Our task is surviving, both the day and the night, explained this resident of Bakhmut. That's how I look at it. And of course it would be nice to be able to cook some food during the day. The city is still holding the ground, thank God. Bakhmut is a fortress. While it remains difficult to see which side is gaining the edge in the region, there is little doubt that there have been heavy losses on both sides. President Vladimir Putin has replaced Russia's top commander in Ukraine just three months after he was installed. Chief of the General Staff Valery Gerasimov will now take the lead, replacing Sergei Sorovikin, who has overseen the brutal attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure. The Institute for the Study of War says ongoing Russian force generation efforts are likely intended to support some form of further offensive operations. And Gerasimov, who approved and did not push back on Russia's disastrous February 2022 war plan, is unlikely to begin resisting Putin now. The UK Defence Ministry thinks that the deployment of Gerasimov as a theatre commander is an indicator of the increasing seriousness of the situation Russia is facing and a clear acknowledgement that the campaign is falling short of Russia's strategic goals. Now, his appointment is likely intended to support an intended decisive Russian military effort in 2023, likely resumed Russian offensive operations. Now, the question is, where can it be? The Institute for the Study of War has previously assessed that Russian forces appear to be preparing for a decisive military effort, possibly in Luhansk region. Over the past few days, heavy fighting continues on the approaches to Kremlina, where Russia has almost certainly allocated elements of its airborne forces to reinforce the front line after assessing the sector was significantly vulnerable. The Institute for the Study of War has also forecasted the most dangerous course of action of a new Russian invasion of Ukraine from Belarus into northern Ukraine, though this remains a worst-case scenario. With a new joint Russian-Belarus tactical flight exercise planned in Belarus, the UK Defense Ministry says the new deployment of Russian aircraft to Belarus is likely a genuine exercise rather than a preparation for any additional offensive operations against Ukraine. And although Russia maintains a large number of forces in Belarus, they are mostly involved in trainings and they are unlikely to constitute a credible offensive force. Further pressure has been heaped on US President Joe Biden after more documents containing classified material were reportedly discovered at a second location. Earlier this week, Biden's lawyers said an initial set of papers had been found at his former office space in Washington. The White House says the president had no knowledge of them. All right, good afternoon, everyone. He said he takes classified documents and information seriously. He was surprised to learn any records had been found, found there. He doesn't know what was in them. He said this, just repeating what the president has said. As soon as his lawyers realized these documents were there, they did the right thing 
and immediately turned them over to the archives. Republicans have seized on the discovery to scrutinize Biden's handling of sensitive information. The revelations may also complicate the Justice Department's decision of whether to bring charges against former President Donald Trump, who argues that inquiries into his own conduct are akin to corruption. Hundreds of supporters of the head of Turkey's medical association have welcomed her release from detention, despite being convicted of spreading terrorist propaganda. Dr. Shebnem Kurov in Charchi was arrested after calling for an independent investigation into claims that the Turkish military used banned chemical weapons against Kurdish militants in northern Iraq. It's the responsibility of us doctors and those of us fighting for human rights to share whatever the truth is, what we've seen. And we should also remember that it's the media's responsibility to relay it to the public. Finchachi is the latest activist to be convicted under Turkey's broad anti-terrorism laws. She was sentenced to two years and eight months in jail on Wednesday. However, people are rarely imprisoned in Turkey for jail sentences under three years. During her trial, she rejected accusations that she engaged in propaganda, arguing that she was just giving her opinion. The Turkish government strongly denies using chemical weapons against the PKK. German riot police are pushing ahead to clear out environmental activists from a condemned village. The village in western Germany is scheduled for demolition to expand a nearby coal mine which Berlin says is necessary to secure the country's energy independence. Activists say the mine will produce huge amounts of greenhouse gas emissions, which contribute to global warming. Police said more than 200 protesters have already left voluntarily, but several others are holding out in buildings and tree houses. Several protesters complained of undue force by police and said the large-scale operation was an unjustified escalation, given the peaceful protest. Up to 25,000 paramedics, emergency call handlers, ambulance drivers and technicians staged a strike in England and Wales on Wednesday against a below inflation 4% pay deal. It was the latest in a series of stoppages in the healthcare sector. Unions agreed ahead to respond to the most urgent Category 1 calls, but the UK's winter of disputes shows no sign of abating. Nurses will walk out again next week and more than 100,000 civil servants will join one-day strike action on the 1st of February. Last month, Taliban officials banned women from working with aid groups in Afghanistan, reneging on a promise they made when they took back power in 2021. Since then, dozens of NGOs and aid agencies have suspended work in the country. Jan Egeland, Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council, visited Kabul this week to convince the Taliban to reconsider. What the Taliban leaders are telling me is that they want us to be able to resume work as soon as possible. And I say we can only do that if our female colleagues can work alongside and together with and with equality to our male uh, aid workers. Without our female staff, we're not able to reach women, widows, single mothers with children, other uh, females who are in very difficult situations. It is definitely against the values of uh, the various traditions in many regions for males to assist women, which is not of their family, directly. Where, where are the ambassadors? Where are the diplomats? Where is the international community? Which said that the women and the children of Afghanistan was their number one priority. They spent hundreds of billions of dollars and euros here over the years. Where are they today, really? M not, not many to see. So I'd like them to engage and help us, really. We are pretty much alone here now. Within the plan. Environmentalists are criticizing a decision by the United Arab Emirates to name Sultan Ahmed al Jaba as the president of this year's COP28 climate talks. He's the chief of the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company and will be the first CEO to take on the role at the UN summit. In a statement, he said, we'll bring a pragmatic, realistic and solutions-oriented approach that delivers transformative progress for climate and for low-carbon economic growth. 
but activists are warning the involvement of a major figure from the oil industry could slow progress in the fight against global warming.